In this video, we will take a race to the next level. In the next few tutorials, I will show you how to write algorithms to perform different operations with arrays. Today you will see how to find duplicate items that appear in two different arrays. This is called intersection. I will demonstrate array intersection with this project that you can program with me. If you are new here, first go and watch lesson 17.1 to 17.6 to get a better understanding of arrays. In the application we will create today, you have three list boxes. The first list box must display an array that contains the names of rugby nations that participated in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. The second list box must display a different array that contains the names of the cricket nations that participated in the 2019 Cricket World Cup. And the third list box must display an array that finds the names of nations that participated in both World Cups. For example, here in the first list box, we have South Africa, New Zealand, Australia and England. Those four countries also played cricket and their names are also listed in the list box in the middle. Our code must find the duplicate or intersecting country names and add it to the list box on the right. Hi, it's Gerard here from Learn Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series, I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons, I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you want to follow what I'm doing but you want to save some time, you can download the starter project to start immediately where I start with this lesson. The starter and solution project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using Delphi Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go do the downloads. I will go ahead and explain the algorithm while you wait for the downloads to finish. We must often find values in two different arrays that intersect or that appear in both arrays. To accomplish that we must write an algorithm. An algorithm is a set of instructions for solving problems or to accomplish a task. A common example of an algorithm is a recipe, which consists of specific instructions for preparing a dish or a meal. Given the same input and following the same instructions, an algorithm will always yield the same result. Now let's see how the algorithm for intersection in two arrays will look. Let's assume our first array stores the names of rugby nations that participated in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. I will use only four countries for this explanation. The second array stores the names of cricket nations that participated in the 2019 Cricket World Cup. I will use only six countries for this explanation. We must also have a third array to store the names of those countries that appear in both the first two arrays. We don't know in advance how many elements the third array will contain. So we must somehow keep track of the size of the array every time a matching name is found and then resize the array appropriately. The ideal way to size and resize an array is to use a dynamic array like we learned in the previous tutorial. The dynamic array will start without elements. You may also declare a fixed size array but then you must provide enough empty elements in advance to contain all the possible matches. We will use a dynamic array because it is more efficient, because it does not use unnecessary space in memory. We will also not run into the problem where the array becomes too small for all the possible matching countries. To find the intersection or duplicates between the two arrays, your code must loop through the first two arrays with two loops. We will need a variable to count the cycle of the array that stores the rugby nations and another variable to count the cycles of the cricket array. We must also have a flag or a boolean to keep track when a match is found. This boolean is an indicator when the loop must stop the current cycle and continue searching for another matching country. And we need another integer variable that sets the size of the dynamic array before we can add a new matching country. In this explanation, the outer loop will cycle through the names of the rugby nations and the inner loop will cycle through the cricket nations. Now let's see how the matching will happen. The outer loop will start at 1 and its upper bound is the length of the rugby array. The loop will find South Africa in the first array. Then the counter for the cricket loop is also set to 1. The boolean is set to false. Then the inner loop looks for two conditions before it enters. It checks if the size of the cricket loop's counter is less than the size of the cricket array. And it checks if the boolean flag is false. The loop will continue its cycles while both those conditions are met. Inside the while loop we have an if statement that checks if the two names in the arrays match. Australia doesn't match South Africa, so the boolean stays false. And nothing is added to the third array. If a match is not found, the inner loop will skip all these statements and increase the cricket loop's counter. The compiler goes back to the top of the inner loop and continues with the next element. New Zealand is also not a match. 
The Boolean stays false and nothing is added to the third array. The loop counter increases and the inner loop continues to the next element. India is also not South Africa. The Boolean stays false and nothing is added to the third array. The loop counter increments and the inner loop continues to the next element. And now it finds a match. South Africa is in both arrays. Now the Boolean is set to true. The variable that determines the size of the dynamic array increases to 1. The dynamic array is sized and it gets a new element. And South Africa is added to the third array. Notice this array's first index is 0 and not 1. In the last lesson you learned that the dynamic array is 0 based. Whenever the flag is true, the inner loop doesn't have to look further. And the rest of the elements are ignored. And the cricket loop exits. After increasing the loop count for the cricket loop one more time, the compiler jumps back to the outer loop. The outer loop moves on to the second element in the rugby array. In this case it finds Canada. But before the inner loop searches for a matching country, the loop counter for the cricket loop is set back to start at 1. The flag is set back to false. The inner loop then finds Australia in the cricket array. It doesn't match Canada. The flag remains false and nothing is added to the third array. The loop counter increments and it moves on to New Zealand. New Zealand is also not a match, so it moves on again. India is not a match, so it moves on. South Africa is not a match, so it moves on. Pakistan is not a match, so it moves on. Sri Lanka is also not a match. The inner loop reached the end of the array and the flag is still false and nothing was added to the third array. Now the outer loop moves on to New Zealand. The cricket loop's counter is set back to 1 and the flag is set to false. Then the inner loop starts at index 1 again. Australia is not a match, so it moves on to index 2 without doing anything else. Now it finds New Zealand and it is a match. The flag is set to true. A new element is added to the dynamic array and New Zealand is added to the third array. And the rest of the elements will be ignored after finding a match. Then the outer loop moves on to Australia. Before the inner loop starts searching, the cricket loop's counter is set back to 1 and the flag is set back to false. The inner loop starts from index 1 again and it finds Australia. Australia is a match and the flag is set to true again. Australia is then added to the third array and it skips the rest of the elements in the cricket array. So now the outer loop is also done. So the whole process is complete. I just want to point out a few important things. As soon as a match is found, the boolean is set to true. This indicates to the compiler to exit the inner loop. The inner loop will always exit in two cases. When the flag is true or when it processes the last element of the array. Now let's see how this can be done in a project. Here I have my project open in Delphi. Here's how it looks. If your download finished, open the starter project and follow me. Double click the first button. Scroll up until you can see the implementation clause. To save you some time, I already declared and populated two arrays here. Both contain string values. IRR Rugby stores the names of 20 rugby nations that played in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. And IRR Cricket stores the names of 10 cricket nations that played in the 2019 Cricket World Cup. Notice South Africa, New Zealand, Australia and England are assigned to both arrays. Go back to the click event handler you created. Go above begin. Type var and enter. Type str rugby nation as string. This string must store the name of each individual rugby nation as we cycle through the array. Go between begin and end. Type lst rugby nations dot clear. We clear this list box. Make a new line and type for str rugby nation in IRR rugby do. Press enter and type begin. Press enter again. Type the statement. Here we use a for in loop to add the value in str rugby nation to the items of the list box named lst rugby nation. Remember with a for in loop you don't have to keep track of the indices of an array. Run the program. Click Rugby Nations. The names of the 20 rugby nations must display in the first list box. Now let's do the same with the cricket playing nations. Close the form. Click the Design tab. Double click this button. Go above Begin. 
type var, press enter, type str cricket nation, as string. This string must store the name of each individual cricket playing nation as we cycle through the array. Go between begin and end, type lst cricket nations, dot clear. We clear this list box. Make a new line and type for str cricket nation in arr cricket do. Press enter and type begin. Press enter again. Type the statement. Here we use a for in loop again to add the value in str cricket nation to the items of the list box named lst cricket nations. Run the program. Click cricket nations. The name of the 10 cricket playing nations must display in the second list box. That was quite easy. To get the names that appear in both arrays is a bit trickier. But let's try it. Close the form. Click the design tab. Double click the third button. Go above begin. Type var. Press enter and type arr both. As array of string. This is a dynamic array of type string. It must store the names of all the countries that appear in both the arrays that we already populated. We may not know in advance how many intersections we have, and that's the reason for a dynamic array. Also notice the two other arrays were declared under the implementation clause, because we also want to use them in this button. But the array that stores the intersections is declared locally, because we only want to use it in this event handler. Press enter. Type int rugby loop. Comma, int cricket loop, comma, int duplicate nations as integer. These two integers must keep track of the count for the two loops, and int duplicate nations must keep track of the element count for resizing the dynamic array. Press enter, type bln match found as boolean. This boolean is the flag that keeps track when a matching country name is found. Press enter. Type str duplicate nation as string. This string stores the name of each individual duplicate country as we cycle through the array. Go between begin and end. Type int duplicate nations. Colon equals zero. We start the size of the dynamic array at zero. Make a new line and type for int rugby loop. Colon equals 1 to length and type ARR rugby between brackets after the length function. In lesson 10.5, I explained how to use the length function to determine how many characters are in a string. The length function can also determine how many elements are contained in an array. This is handy if you don't always know how big an array will be, or if you don't want to use a hard coded number because the element count may change in the future. Press enter and type begin. Enter again. Type int cricket loop, colon equals 1. This for loop is the outer loop that cycles the rugby playing nations for this algorithm. Its first value is 1 and it is assigned here. Now we will nest a while loop inside this for loop to cycle through the cricket playing nations. A while loop doesn't have a counter variable that sets the starting value. So here we assign 1 to int cricket loop as the starting value of the while loop. Press enter. Type bln match found. Colon equals false. Before we start looking for matches with the while loop, we must always make sure that the flag that keeps track when a match is found is set to false. Press enter. Type while int cricket loop is less or equal to length and between brackets arr cricket. And bln match found equals false. Remember the nested loop must exit on two conditions, when it found the last element of the array and when a match was found. So here we use a while loop that keeps cycling while it hasn't reached the end of the array and while a match is not found yet. Notice we use the length function again to determine the element count of the array. Press enter, type begin, 
enter again, type this if statement. Press enter and type again. Enter again. Type BLN match found. Colon equals true. Press enter. Type this statement. Press enter. And type this statement. Press enter again. Now type this statement. Let's quickly go through this. This if statement compares the name of a rugby playing nation with the name of a cricket playing nation. If the names match, we set the boolean to true. The boolean indicates to the nested while loop that it doesn't need to look any further. We also increase the variable that sets the size for the dynamic array here. Then we use the increase number and resize the dynamic array with the set length procedure that I explained last time. Now we have an extra element in the dynamic array. So with this statement we assign the matching country name to the new element. Notice again, I subtract 1 from the index number here, because the dynamic array's indexing always starts at 0. So this will bring the indexing of the dynamic array in sync with the other arrays. Make a new line after the end statement of the while loop. Type this statement. Here we increase the loop count for the while loop. All we need to do now is to display the intersecting country names in the list box. Make a new line between these two end statements and type LST both dot clear. We clear this list box. Make a new line. Type for str duplicate nation in arr both do. Press enter and type begin. Press enter again. Type this statement. Here we use a for in loop, like with the first two buttons, to cycle the new array and we add each individual intersecting country name to a list box, named LST both. Now run the program. Click both. The list box shows four country names. Click Rugby Nations and click Cricket Nations. Now verify that you can see these four countries in the first two list boxes. Close the form and save your project. If this was a bit confusing, you may need to watch my explanation again at the beginning of this video. You can also add or remove country names from the arrays declared under the implementation clause. This will also work for arrays that store other data types, like numbers or dates. Next time we will look at more algorithms with arrays. If you enjoyed this lesson, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. And happy coding. See you next time.